in the hallway track is the best part of any con. But the, 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 and, and I came to the realization that I am a snob. Um, I'm a food snob. And um, so rather than um, have to suffer anymore, I'm going to bring you all up to my level. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, really, what, what, um, it, when I, I began to research this talk, I began to understand that the reason I'm the way I am is because I was programmed that way. In my defense, my parents are both food snobs. My care packages as a child um, at summer camp and when I went away to college consisted of um, Zabar's bagels, um, Murray's cream cheese, and smoked salmon. Yes. Um, I got um, oh scones with, um, with clotted cream from England. I got um, figs with prosciutto to wrap around them. Other people got chips and, and cookies and, and stuff like that, and, and, and this is what my parents sent me. Um, and everybody's parents embarrass you as a child, but some of my most embarrassing moments, have you ever had them have to hold a plane for you while your mother explains in detail where she got the tortillas she's smuggling four suitcases of? Um, my childhood was wasted um, going, um, trying to find the perfect New York meatball sandwich in California and the perfect Mexican food in Manhattan. So, um, so I spent a lot of time thinking about, about the whys, and I came across the most interesting book. Um, there's a, a man named David Kessler. He was head of the FDA for seven years under Clinton, and he has trouble controlling what he eats. And so he decided to research. Come on up, guys, because there are, there are bags on the chairs for you to have. Um, OK. And, um, and when he decided that he was going to, I need to walk around, and it's hard to, to pace because this is taped on. Um, when he decided that he, was, that, that he needed to figure out why he was compulsively addicted to certain kinds of foods, he began looking into, into the whole um, science behind food. And he discovered, much to his surprise, it led him not only to neuroscientists, but to um, flavor makers in the FDA and to, um, to people like Furminich, whose only job it is is to come up with, with fake chemical flavors of things. And, and his research led, led him to, to um, write a book about it, which is called The End of Overeating, and I strongly recommend it to you. Um, it's, it, now, mind you, it's, it's, it's written for, for public consumption, so it's an easy read. It's, it's kind of dumbed down, but it's meticulously documented. And if you want to read, read the actual papers that are published on PubMed, um, it's all in the back. So you can get, get the science that's on this. So um, what you're going to get today. Um, first, we're going to talk about this whole neuroscience and how your brain is wired and how the food industry in particular is rewiring your brain. And then we're going to experiment with some things, not so that you can find out what I think about them, but so that you guys can, can, dis can understand what it is you are tasting from your own personal perspective. I don't know how your brain's wired. I don't know um, what it is you think about things when you taste them. But this will at least allow you to take the time to think about it. Um, so the experiments we are, the first thing we're going to do is, is in each of your bags are four pieces of chocolate labeled one, two, three, and four. And they are from, from um, four single plantation chocolates. That means that every cocoa bean in, in that particular piece of chocolate came from one plantation in one part of the world. Um, they are either from Michelle Cuisel or Valrona, which are two of my favorite chocolatiers. And on your sheet of paper are a list of flavor notes. We're going to have a contest to see if, if you can taste the things that the experts think that they're tasting. And whoever comes close, I have prizes. Um, the second experiment we're going to run is for those of you that, that um, um, drink alcohol, there is a, um, there's a particular um, French wine. It is their version of port. It's a Grenache grapes 
it's kind of meh. It's not a creamy tawny port with a smoky aftertaste that you know and love. This is, there's no real reason to drink this until you pair it with either chocolate or cheese. And when I do food tastings and I want to show people why you pair a food with a particular wine, this is the best example I know of. So that's what, so we're going to try that. And then the third, third experiment we're going to run today is in each of your bags is also a tablet of miracle fruit. Miracle fruit is a Japanese berry. And in tablet form, it's, hi it's highly concentrated. What it does is block your, your ability to taste sour. Um, so you, um, so we're just going to mess around. I, I bought a, ho a whole bunch of things. Um, we got lemons and limes. We have salsa. We have M&Ms and, and, um, and uh, what, cucumbers and a few other things. Just so that you can, the, the last experiment is just so you can mess around. Um, but it will affect you for a while. OK. <laughs> So let's talk about the science first. This is not true. There is no place on your tongue that is just for bitter, just for sour, just for salt, and just for sweet. Every, every taste bud on your tongue is actually a set of receptors for all of them. It's just that there are some more concentrated in certain areas than others. Um, what you really taste with is your brain, um, and particularly um, with the See, the cool thing about this is that your body is an electrochemical machine. And it, taste is one of its hackable interfaces. And once you understand that, you can mess with it in any way you want to. So, so this is that book I was talking about by Kessler, The End of Overeating. I, I strongly recommend you get it. Um, what Kessler found when he visited food scientists, he took, he took with him a um, copy of the Chili's menu. And had one of the food scientists go through some of the appetizers and some of, of the um, main courses. And what he found was that each appetizer and each main course is set up with fat, salt, sugar, fat, salt, sugar, sugar, fat, sugar, fat, sugar, salt, salt, salt. Um, vari variations of that, but all in particular proportions. The food is also pre-processed. It's not cooked at any chain restaurant, any fast, re fast food restaurant. Um, and, and these are you know, the top of the line chain restaurants as well. Your food is not cooked at the restaurant. Your food is pre-prepared in a factory. It is pre-digested for you. For example, if you order something like a chicken, chicken breast, the food is, um, the chicken breast is put inside of, of a tumbler where it is tumbled with, um, with whatever um, they, f liquid they want to inject it with, whatever oil and flavorings. And, and um, um, those of you who are in the back, you need to come up and get bags and, and oh, good, renders hanging out, um, with the stuff you're going to taste. Um, and... It, that's done for two reasons. First, it takes a piece, a crappy piece of meat, and it makes you feel like it's better, be, it's moister, and it's fresher, and it's whatever because they've injected um, oils in it to plump it up, they um, and liquids and and um, marinades and things like that. But it's also softened so that it is pre-chewed. It's such that when you eat it, you eat it faster, you and you don't even realize it. How many of you go, go out to eat and eat much more than you think you're going to? You order a plate of appetizer uh, or something, and it's gone before you're aware that, it's, that, it, that you've eaten it. And then you order a main course, and the main course comes, and it's, it's a lot of food, and you polish it all off without thinking about it. Um, this is calculated. They're doing this on purpose. And the other thing that Kessler found out is it's not just the restaurants that are doing it. It's your grocery stores. If you walk into a normal supermarket today, and you look on the shelves, even if there are hundreds of products, um, with the exception of very specialized grocery stores, those hundreds of products come from five manufacturers only. No matter whose name is on the product, they're from five manufacturers. And so if you buy a packaged mix of something you're going to make at home, if you buy a canned spaghetti sauce or a, a bottled jar of something that you're going to add, um, if you're not carefully looking at the label, chances are you're getting a particular mixture of sugar, salt, and fat. So these, what, what's happened and what they've discovered is that, um, and they did this with very interesting experiments with rats, which I'll get to in a second, but what they've discovered is that the brain has what they call certain bliss or saturation points. And those, those points depend on a percentage or a ratio of fat to sugar and fat to salt. And when it's right, you can't stop eating it. Have you ever um, opened a bag of Doritos? And um, so, so what this does is, um, is 
this bliss point that they're talking about stops your brain from being able to, to it, it stops what they call the saturation point. You don't understand that you've had enough. You can't. Your brain, um, the dopamine pathways that, that you have lead to two things. The limbic system is one of emotion, um, your reward pathways essentially, and the hippocampus, which is your one of memory. And the two together create actual neuropathways in your brain. So the more fast food you eat, the more likely you are to eat more of it. Um, and, and unless you know that, you, you, um, this is all happening to you instead of for you. Um, I think I'm, I'm probably confusing you. But the experiments, here's, here's the kind of experiments that they ran. They took food that rats kind of like, and they put it in one corner of a, of a cage. They took foods that rats can't resist, and they poisoned it in such a way that it made the rats sick. And they put it in the other coin, corner of the cage. Then they put the rats in, and the first thing the rats did was run to the corner of the cage for the food they really like, eat it up, and get sick. Um, normally, then the, the rats avoid that food for the next week or so. It takes about a week for them to forget about it, unless they alter the fat-to-sugar ratio of it. And when they alter the fat-to-sugar ratio, the, fats, the, the rats will eat it anyway, even though they know they're going to get sick. They can't stop themselves. Um, that's what's happening to us. That's what the food industry has been doing on purpose. Um, and um, why do you think that, that your proportions are so big? So what makes me different is that I can't do it. You know the freshman 15 pounds that everyone gains their first, their first month of college, their first semester of college? I lost weight because I couldn't eat the dorm food. Because my parents didn't eat it, I don't have the same, the same neural pathways naturally. Um, so while there are some things I will overeat, um, if you take me out to Nobu, I will overeat on, on brilliant sushi. Um, but at you know, $200 a person, that's, uh, somebody else has to pay for it. Um, <laughs> but I can't, I can't stomach some of the food. I'd, I'd, I'd rather go hungry. And it's only because my brain is wired differently. So what I want you guys to do is understand enough about, about this so that you can do the wiring of your brain. Wire it any way you want to. It's your brain. Um, but understand and don't let things be done to you. Do it yourself. So here's one more thing I want to, to, to oops, we're going up. We should be going down. Um, so what's happening with the commercially prepared foods is that it's t it, they are taking over you. And, and one of the, um, the things that they found about um, obesity in particular is that it has exactly the same neural responses as any other form of addiction. Um, you become conditioned to it. You become unable to stop it. And that, I think, um, not only is it, is it dangerous for you physically, but I find that per particularly offensive, that someone that some one or some group of people would believe that, that they, should, they can do that to me. I, I want the control of, over my own body to do so that I can do whatever I want to do. So now, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about the science. Go read the books. Um, if, like me, can you guys hear me okay if I just shout for a second? Any yeah. Yeah. If, like me, your, um, your finances have taken a rather um, abrupt downward turn in this, um, this, um, current, in this current economy, you probably need to do a lot of cooking for yourself. I recommend two books, or at least two, um, two, two groups of people. The first is Cooks Illustrated. Has anybody heard of this? Oh, yeah. Yes. Cooks Illustrated is a science for cooking. What, what they, they basically hack ingredients. And what, whether it's something they're interested in, like making scones or something somebody's written them to and say, how do I do this? They take a recipe. They then alter the, re the temperature that you're baking it at by 15 degrees or by 10 minutes longer. Or they change the level of fluids. And they, they make 50 different batches of something and figure out which one tastes the best. So in the science of cooking, um, Cook's Illustrated is, is where I would go to. We've never had a recipe that they have recommended fail, not once. Um, and we have, yeah. It's a great magazine, great website. Um, you can just go to cooksillustrated.com and figure out what you want to make that day. And I, I guarantee um, you might not, you might not um, agree with some of their flavor choices, but they give you all sorts of different options and why. <coughs> the second thing I recommend is the Flavor Bible. And this is fun. Somebody has taken all the characteristics of everything you can think of, every single ingredient, um, and created an analog database of what it is, what its, what its flavor is,
flavored or tart and what it's going to go with. Um, so if you open your refrigerator and you have almonds and parsley, you can search in here for almonds and parsley and figure out what you can make with them and why. This is very fun. A friend of mine, by the way, the woman who, who um, designed the Half Bakery, I don't know if you're familiar with that, she's putting this all into online database format, so eventually we'll all be, we'll be able to search it. I don't know if she'll, she'll publicize it or not. But um, I'll, I'll pass both of these around. Um, feel free. Uh, this, is, this is so much fun, just, just to, to, um, to go through. And now, let's taste stuff. OK. <laughs> So, how many of you have ever been to a chocolate tasting before? Okay, then you already know what I'm going to talk about. Um, I chose chocolate instead of something else like cheese. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it's more approachable for most people. But like, like wines, like cheeses, chocolate is a very complex food. And therefore, it's, um, it's a good thing to, to try when you first experiment. Um, so... What I want you to do is I want to open, you open up your, ba your bags and take out those four little bags. Everybody have a bag? Yeah, does, does anyone need a, a bag and a, and a um, score sheet? Okay. So, I don't know how reasonable that is. That's a chocolate tasting wheel. These are how, how the experts divide, um, render back there. Um, this is how the experts divide um, the chocolate flavor notes. Sweet, chocolatey, aromatic, roasted, earthy, medicinal, fruity, and dairy. You also sometimes get things like citrus. Um, and in that, of course, there are all these other subcategories like caramel or nutty or, um, or whatever. Um, and I wish I had one of these for everybody, but I don't. But I'll put it back up on, on the screen for us later. Oh, what did I do? Hold on. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your piece of chocolate. Whoever's computer this is, come back and fix it. Um, um, you can take, take a piece of chocolate. It doesn't matter which because the bags are numbered. Just remember for your sake which, which number it is. And I want you to look at it. One of the wonderful things about, about the, the taste interface of your body is that it of all of your, thank you, of all of your, um, your senses, this is the only one that combines. It combines sight, it combines smell, it combines touch, and it combines taste. Okay? So. So the first thing I want you to do is pull out a piece of chocolate. Just remember what bag it's in. Because you're going to have to know what number it is to mark it on your sheet. The contest is... Um, it, the, the, the checklist that you have on your sheet of paper contains what the experts think of a particular chocolate, one of the ones that's in your bag. Okay? Your job is to, t is to taste the, each of the chocolates. And by the way, in each of your bags is crackers so that you can um, have a piece of cracker in between chocolate so that you can, um, you can clear your palate. Okay? Your job is to see if you can match what the experts think. And if you can you get a bar of Linz Weihnacht Schokolade. This stuff, if Christmas had a flavor, this would be it. Um, it is only available between November and December, and it's not available in the US at all. Um, I order this from Germany every year, and it costs me as much to ship it as it does to, um, to actually, as the bars themselves cost. And it is worth every penny, okay? So, um, yes? Okay. The first, the, you are going to let it melt on your tongue. Chocolate cannot be tasted unless it melts, which is why the fat content is so important. Um, so smell it, look at it. Is it shiny? Is it, is it variegated in texture? Is it smooth? And then let it melt on your tongue. And then see what you taste. Breathe in. Breathe in through your mouth. All of these, by the way, are um, top chocolatiers, so you don't have to worry. You're not getting crap. <laughs> and then um, take your time. We're, we're not in a hurry. We've actually got plenty of time. So when, you, when you've finished one, mark, mark down which one you think it matches and go on to the next one. 
the meantime, I'm going to have some chocolate. <laughs> By the way, just so you know, these are the bars that you are tasting. in case other people win. Any opinions? Like, don't like? You never go back to Hershey's again. Though I have to admit, <laughs> it's got sour milk in it, you guys, and you can taste it. Though I have to admit, I have a fondness for M and M's. Um, melted in the microwave. You ever um, put them in for like like ten seconds, and the chocolate melts, but the shell doesn't? Um, it, it's wonderful. <laughs> Take a marshmallow and um, poke a hole in it, like with a, a skewer or a fork, and put a couple of M&Ms inside the marshmallow and put them in the microwave for like 10 to 20 seconds, depending on your microwave. The marshmallow expands. The M&Ms melt inside the shell, but the shell still remains harder. It's like a marshmallow with a candy center. <laughs> that is awesome stuff. You're going to McDonald's in Germany. Um, okay, how are we doing so far? Okay, let me know when. We've got at least a half an hour, so we're not in a hurry. Take your time and enjoy.
you, you got hit by something, huh? No, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Say loud so everyone can hear. So besides all the, um, the wine and the other food pairings, one of the, the big things that's picking up now is uh, tasting craft beer with uh, various foods and whatnot. I, I think um, there's a couple of brewers out there that make a, quite a big effort. I think uh, Garrett, um, Garrett Oliver of uh, Brooklyn does a lot mm -hmm. of um, yes. tasting. Same thing with Sam Callion from uh, Dogfish Head. Uh, one of the things is, uh, is trying to do beer and desserts. So. Um, there's a lambic style from Belgium that really goes well with fruits and dark chocolates. That's so the, the heavy dark, um, isn't it? The, the no, that's actually the, uh, the more champagne-like. Um, oh, I have to try that then. I love, I love a dark actual yeast, um, right? In the wild. Well, that's the Brettomyces, which is the uh, the wild yeast. Um, but also to do a uh, an imperial stout or dark, a really dark, strong stout with the chocolate, and it actually enhances the chocolate flavor a lot of times, too. Are, and you can tell me if you want. <laughs> 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 I, mean, uh, <laughs> I always believe people are twice. Actually, I was, you always believe people. But I want to make sure everybody's had a chance because we've had a few people just come in. Um, but aren't they good? Aren't these ones really worth, um, uh -huh, worth having? No. <laughs> I, I bring an extra suitcase. Which uh, Actually, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing what you can find now with certain ones. Zabar's is um, is on 80th Street and Broadway in Manhattan. It's um, it's it's very funny because because Zabar's has always been known for for like. No matter where you are in the world, if you if you crave something, they will send it to you. But they actually have the best prices for certain things. They roast their own coffee, so their coffee is absolutely effing fantastic. Um, and now they've started with their own bars. Um, I brought both dark and, and their dark milk for us to have with the banyuls um, today. And it's quite good, but, but sometimes you can find some particular um, house brands, local brands, that are inexpensive. I mean, these, bars, these bars are half the cost of these um, and just as satisfying. Um, Wegmans, I don't know if you guys have Wegmans, this is where you guys are. They do it, they, they've come out with their own now Wegmans house brand, which is quite good. Um, anybody in California or anybody who's online, have you joined the Cho beta testing club yet? Um, yeah, yeah John. <laughs> um, Cho, that's T C H O, uh, a couple dot com billionaires decided to start their own chocolate company. And they've been beta testing chocolate for a while now, and you can join, you can sign up, and for like five dollars, they send you a bar of something, and you send them back your comments on it. Is it too citrusy? Is it uh, this whatever? And they've now got, I think, four or five different versions of uh, um, each with their own different flavor notes, but they keep coming up with more. Um, so I, I recommend you guys all go to Cho and sign up. But they're in um, Barcadero in the Bay, uh, right in, in San Francisco, so you can just wander down there and, and try stuff too. Um, Scharfenberger is another really good US brand. Um, okay, we done? We want to try this? Okay. Let me get a sheet so I know what I'm actually telling you about. Okay. Um, if you do, come up here and get a bag of something to take. You mix the actual contest, but you want to put All right. The first one on the list is B. It is highly, and it's B only because this is my own personal code because of the box color. Um, it is highly aromatic, exceptionally long finish, combining a toasty, spicy, er and herbaceous notes with flavors of ripe tropical fruits and licorice sticks. B is, hold on, find out which box it is. 
B is number four. Yeah. Okay, so this is Michelle Cuisel's Via Gracinda Ana, and it comes from the island of San Tomé, just off the coast of Africa. Okay? So, number two is O. O has hints of vanilla in it. It has honey and spice cake and caramel and a lingering odor, aroma, sorry, not odor, of mixed dried and black fruits. O is number two. Okay. Number two, by the way, is also Michelle Crizel. This is Concepcion. This is from the Caribbean. Oh, oops, sorry. Anyway, it says, he selected this plantation in the valley of Barlovento to the east of, of, oh, to the east of Caracas. Oh, cool orama. Um, Okay, number three has an exceptionally long nose with dried fruits, sweet almonds, and a woody base. It's balanced and velvety. Number A is one. Bingo! Okay. Uh Uh-oh, I may not have brought enough prizes. Um, And the last one, of course, is the only one left over, number three. Um, So, honey caramel, roasted oats, low acidity, no fruit. In other words, this is the milk chocolate. Um, Yeah. Okay, anybody get them all right? I don't have enough prizes. <laughs> Would you guys be willing to share if we broke some of this up? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. let's do that. Say, okay. Come up and get, um, by the way, I have some of this, of this back in my room for those of you who don't get a ch- uh, chance to taste it. But um, come break this up into, say, fourths or sixths. Break this up into fourths or sixths. I think sixths. Yeah. Break this up. Yeah. For the rest of us. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, break it up into. I have a few more bars of this um, back in my room, so um, I'll bring it down tonight to the bar and we can have some anyway. So, um, they used to sell this in the U.S., they don't anymore. And um, it's. It, it's a big tragedy because this is this is for me is is, is a Christmas, um, you know, a childhood memory. Um, a ganz gut. Wie lange war sie da? Oh, ausgezeichnet. Das wäre viel Spaß, ne? So this goes faster. Yes. Isn't it? It's amazing. Nothing, nothing tastes like this. I swear to God. I'm gonna have to get some friends to ship this. Can I take a look at that first? Yeah. So you just you buy it from friends in Germany or from a shop? Um, for a while, I got, I had a remailer in in Switzerland, and I would just have Lint send it to my remailer, my remailer send it to me. Um, there is one one mail order place called Bavaria, um, whatever. Ping me, and I'll and I'll get you a link. Well, I was gonna, I, um, yeah. Off Everybody get some? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, I now need you all to clear your palates if you still have some crackers left. And if you don't, um, um, if you don't, go get a chip. Um, where are the... Yes. Um, if you're out of crackers, come get a tortilla chip to clear your palate. We're going to do the next thing, and then the last thing we'll just we'll just do in a hurry. Um, there are two things that you can try right now um, that we're going to do. If you've never had real balsamic vinegar, you don't know why people rave about it. This bottle is two hundred and fifty dollars. It was a gift. It's also packaged so like a so 
so long, I can't have, there's none for you guys to share. So please. Um, <laughs> this stuff is the closest affordable I have found to it. Real balsamic vinegar is not vinegar. Real balsamic vinegar is aged like wine. It uses um, grape mo most, I think that's what they call it. And it is aged in wooden casks. And it tastes like candy. It is syrup. You, people, who, um, people who buy this stuff wander around with little silver spoons and dole it out on top of their peaches or on top of some, uh, something else. But um, they wander around with like silver demitasse spoons. And that's it. So this stuff, when I use this in anything, when I, when I drizzle it on a dessert or when I put it as part of a salad dressing or when I add it to gravy or to, to something else that I think it needs, um, you need very, very little of it. It's highly concentrated. It's very sweet. Um, and it's just delicious. It, the flavor that it adds is, is unique to itself. I can't really describe it as anything but balsamic vinegar. But it's so subtle that, um, that it changes um, the, the, the total picture without letting you know what's, what's actually tasting. So what I want you to do is head up to... Um, we're going to do two things right now. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the banyuls. Um, and this is because it will, it will optimize our time if we do both at the same time. Um, people f pair food and wine. And they do it for a reason. Because both of the things that you're tasting are better paired than they are apart. The sum is greater than the whole. And the best example I have of this is this wine from France. It's a Grenache. It's called Bagnoles. It's France's trying to do, do port. So it's not a, it's not a, a single vintage. It's, it's a blend. Um, and by itself, there's absolutely no reason to drink it. It's just meh. It's truly unremarkable and uninteresting until you pair it with either chocolate or cheese. A beautiful blue cheese and it's amazing, the, the, the change. Um, chocolate is not as strong, but I didn't know if people, I didn't know how over, overpowering the cheeses would be, and, and people are very particular about their cheese tastes. So, so I thought it would be um, much more approachable for everybody if we used chocolate. So in, in the little cups to the right, um, where there's the whole lines of cups, you'll find banyuls. And you'll also find um, little um, broken up pieces of the Zabar's chocolate, milk and dark, it doesn't matter. Take your own preference. Um, so what I want you to do to taste the balsamic vinegar, come get one of those little spoons, wooden spoons, just dip it in, in one of the, the three vinegar um, things and just taste it. That's, um, it. It'll be interesting. You'll, 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 you'll like it. You'll be surprised. This bottle sells for around $40, $45. So it's quite affordable. It will last you six months easily because you use so very little of it. When I'm making a salad dressing for four or six people, I'm using maybe a teaspoon of it. You don't need much more of that than that. So come and try that. And also for the banyuls, how I want you to do this is I want you to taste, just sip the wine. You'll find there's no, that you won't really like it. it doesn't, it's not great at all. Then I want you to, 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 to have the chocolate, let it melt on your tongue, let it coat the whole tongue, and taste the wine again and see if there's any difference to you in the way that it tastes, okay? So everybody, they're, they're on both sides of the room, come up and, and take a spoon, dip it in one of the, the things, just taste. You only need a drop. And then take the bagnoles and stuff. Oh, okay, hold on. Is there no vinegar on this side? There's vinegar on this side. Okay, great. We're all taking care of? Good. I didn't see it, so, sorry. I have more left if we run out, so. Screens are, are is the, the lowdown on the balsamic vinegar and what makes it di different. I think that was mine. 
The wine should open up in your mouth. You should you should actually um, taste it bigger than it was. Completely different. So, for someone who doesn't drink, what do they pair with? Um, you should pair chocolate with anything. Um, I I begin to drink as an adult, so I've got a lot of um, trouble is that when you grow up, you need to do it. So, so, so I would try, I would try um, a sharp lemon citrus. Um, I would try, um, or I would try a tea of some I bet we could do something with tea. Yes. Like like wines, good balsamic vinegar only can come from its own particular region. It has to come from Moderna. Um, thank you. That's a good question. None of the balsamic vinegars you get in a normal supermarket are aged in casks, okay? You have to get this from specialty. Um, and I strongly recommend this one. It's, it's inexpensive, but it's, oh, by the way, like a, like a wine, it's only bottled once a year. When they run out, they run out, and you can't get any more for that year. Um, we're going to run out of time for the miracle fruit, so I suggest everyone sit down when you're done, and let's get on to the, to the last and final thing, which can take up the rest of the time. It's exactly what it is. It has to be released. Sometimes, but it's not going to come out the same. No. Um, okay. Miracle fruit is cool. The, I only threw this in because it's fun, um, and it just shows how how your body's receptors really do control what you perceive. So this is this berry. It's in in, um, in Japan, and what they found is that when they condensed it, um, and that's what you have in your little tablets, which are in your bags. Um, you have you each have a tablet of this. I want you to take it out. I want you to put it in your mouth, and I want you to let it melt on your tongue, and you're just going to swirl it around. It has to coat your entire tongue. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm afraid that this is going to affect you for at least an hour. Um, you are going to feel very weird, I promise. Um, uh, <laughs> um, um, now, I do warn you, there, are, there is a tiny per, a percentage of the population for which this has absolutely no effect at all. Like, you know, there's humans on every range of the spectrum. Um, some, some of you might not be affected, and some of you might be over-affected, and it might last even longer. Um, the, besides parties, the uses for miracle fruit, it's, um, th they're finding that, that it is especially good for, thing, for people like cancer patients because, because radiation tends to destroy your ability to taste and therefore your desire to eat. 
And what they found is that when, when they um, can give this stuff to people who've gone through radiation therapy, it at least allows them, gives them enough, enough of a taste that food tastes good to them again, and they can eat for a while. Um, so it has to dissolve on your tongue. It has to coat your tongue. For those of you, you in the back, I have, um, please come up and, and get some yourself. I have extras. If we're out of bags, I still have extra miracle fruit. Right now is um, Think Geek is selling them three, um, buy three, get one free. I'll uh, get it from Render, the guy in the hat in the, right there. Um, and, um, and so if you bought three, you got one free. If you bought six, you got one free. But if you bought three and, got, and then bought another three and then bought another three, you got one free. So um, that's how I help fund this. Um, and also because you get lots of things with your, your extra geek points. Um, they're about $15 a box for 10 um, now, n now, normally I um, give people a half a tablet at a time because then it only lasts for about half an hour. But I wanted you guys to have the full effect of this. <laughs> Does it work? <laughs> Works for John. Okay, once, you've once it's dissolved and you've allowed it to, to turn on your tongue, come and taste everything else. The lemons are going to taste like lemonade. Um, the cucumbers are going to taste sweet to you. Salsa to me I couldn't eat because it was too sweet. Strawberries I couldn't eat because they were too sweet. It gagged me. They were, they were so cloying. Um, there's M&Ms, there's marshmallows. Um, just come, come and try things. Um, feel free. Um, uh, no. There's one next to the uh, water can over here. We can use our little bag. Um, here's also the garbage bags and things. Um, there's still a little bit of the Vinox chocolate up here if people want some more. There are a few, a few more pieces. Uh, we were using bags and things. get it from. Wow. Where do you get the miracle? Um, I got that from Think Geek. Um, you can also buy it on eBay, but I found that, um, that some, sometimes you'll get a different brand on, on uh, the eBay ones, and they're not as strong. So, so definitely, if you buy the miracle fruit, you want the green boxes, not the yellow. Um, the last time we did this, some people, I, I had some of each. The yellow turned out to not to be very strong, and people didn't get nearly the effect that they do. So you're one of the few that it can't. Um, um, yeah, um, my friend Cat, it doesn't have any effect on Cat either. Um, there's just a small percentage of the world. Um, yeah. It doesn't work on her? doesn't work on her at all. Um, <laughs> where are you from? Um, all over. Um, 
my, my parents are really <coughs> close to me. So I, I grew up downtown. I haven't seen the apartment that you're outside New York City. Is there I live, okay. I live, I live, I live across from the mail order, and you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm from New York City. Oh, okay, okay. So it's fine. Like, like, yeah. If there were yeah. Z-bars yeah. elsewhere, yeah. because I was going yeah. to go down. Oh, yeah. It it is and and, and um, these are some things that like at Zabar's you can get um, you can get the Brooklyn cheesecake, but at Murray's you get um, so. Actually, I've got to tell you, even Cinderella, a lot of good stores in your city have good cheese areas. Yeah, well, Murray's yeah, but, was kind of on its own. Yeah, but the thing about Murray's is that there's no preservatives in their cream cheese. There's no, um, yeah. Um, and Murray's is in Grand Central. Store. Okay, we have just a few more minutes until the next talk. So if you, uh, if you guys could finish up grabbing the little bit of food that you are going to grab for your more experiments. Oh, yeah. Um, it is almost 3 o'clock, so the next talks are going to start in a little bit. Before we start, we have another round of announcements. So, like, again, you got three or four minutes. Um, grab a little bit more chocolate, marshmallows or whatever. Um, take your seats. There are still talks going on in the main conference hall. So, you got about, like I said, you got about three minutes. Thank you.